Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at the newly released Carinado Cessna 182RG. The aircraft has just arrived on the scene for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's an add-on that I've quite been looking forward to myself actually, wanting a half decent steam gauge variant of the Cessna 182 within the sim. So in today's video we're going to be carrying out a review flight of the aircraft. We're currently on the ground at Sedona, we're going to be taking the aircraft up north towards the Grand Canyon National Airport. The flight should be fun and a decent test of the aircraft, we're going to be carrying out some VOR tracking, we use the GPS as well, we'll test out the ILS. We're also going to be operating at fairly high altitude here today, so a good test of the 182's performance. And as usual, this is going to be a full flight, all the way through from a cold and dark start, right the way through to shutdown. I'll try my best to demonstrate the add-on as we go, and then, as is typical, we'll finish up the review with a conclusion of the product. As always, ladies and gents, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, then please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. So here we are then in the cockpit of the Carinado Cessna 182RG. As ever, the aircraft is an exemplary effort in terms of its texturing and modelling. Carinado have done a very nice job. Everything very detailed, looking very lifelike as well. Very photorealistic. Again, a really lovely effort. As usual though, there are one or two bugs that I've come across here along the way. For example, you'll notice here with the Cat 140 autopilot unit, the unit is currently powered, despite having both the battery master and the Avonix master selected off. I haven't used the Cat 140 in the sim for a little while, so I'm not sure whether or not there's a current bug with the unit in general, or whether or not that's an aircraft specific issue. I suspect probably the latter. There are a few more bugs on the aircraft as well, we'll touch on those as we go. In the meantime though, running through our before start checks, Pre-flight inspection has been completed, passenger briefing not required, seatbelts and shoulder harnesses are secure, circuit breakers are as ever not modelled on the aircraft but just checking those, they're all set in, electrical equipment is selected off again just with the exception there of the Cat 140, Everlinux master switch is off, the brakes, those are tested and set, cow flaps, are selected open, light controls, visibility out the side of the 182 is not particularly brilliant, the windows as you can see sit quite low below the pilot, it's okay when you're looking down at the ground. One other issue I have noticed with the aircraft, the throw on the rudder there seems to be very limited, that's full deflection out to the left, and same there out to the right, I'm not entirely sure but I I highly suspect that's a bit of an issue that currently needs fixing up on the aircraft. Nevertheless, the flight controls are full free and in the correct sense. For the start checks, it's going to be a cold start, so we'll prime the engine three times. Nice sounds there as well on the primer. Aircraft sounds, I have to say, are generally very good. I've yet to find any cockpit switches or controls which don't have an associated sound, which is great to see. Anyway, the primer is set in and locked. Carb heat is set cold, throttle will open quarter of an inch. The prop is set through to high RPM, mixture can go through to fully rich. Prop area is clear, we'll crack the window. Clear prop! Battery master switch is selected on. Take the beacon lights and the nav lights on. And one last quick glance again over the prop area, no one around. So we'll come through to ignition start. So good start there. Again, I think the engine sounds are pretty nice overall. The start sounds there very good. Just come out there slightly on the throttle, then the engine tick over at a thousand RPM. The oil pressure has come up into the green. We're operating pretty high altitude here out of Sedona, up at around 5,000 feet. We'll just lean out the engine here for our ground operations. Alternator can go on. And there we are showing a positive charge on the ammeter. Not entirely sure with the alternator and battery master there, whether or not they're in the correct sense, or they should be the other way around. Feels a little bit unusual having it there on the right, but that could just be misremembering on my part. Anyway, ammeter is checked, so we'll take the avionics master on. We'll wait here for the Garmin GNS 530 to initialize, then we can set up the radios for our flight. In the meantime, we'll continue on with the checklist, so transponder, 
can go through to standby. Nav lights, once again, are selected on. Flaps are selected up. And just visually confirming there they are in the correct position. And the flaps looking good. We'll take the taxi light on here. We're going to be taxiing in just a few minutes time. In terms of the altimeter, we've got a QNH there of 30.30. That is correct. That's giving us an aerodrome elevation of 4,800 feet, which is what we're expecting to see. So we'll just let the GNS 530 run through its satellite acquisition phase. In the meantime, showing 215 there on the HSI. Same there on the magnetic compass. In terms of our first course, it's going to be 008 out towards the Flagstaff VOR, so we'll set that here on the CDI bar. The GNS 530 has now initialized, so once we've got the CDI set here, we can start programming our route and setting up the radios. As you can see, so far the aircraft certainly not bad. Sounds great. Everything seems to be working more or less correctly. So we've got 008 set there on the HSI. In terms of building up our flight plan, we're going to be departing out of Sedona. We've already got that Kilo Sierra Echo Zulu. Initial waypoint is going to be the Flagstaff VOR. We'll use the keyboard to enter that, so we're going to be looking for Foxtrot Lima Golf. And sure enough, Flagstaff, we'll enter that. It is going to be the USA, the VOR there, so we'll select Enter. After Flagstaff, we're going to be tracking out towards the Grand Canyon VOR. That's Golf Charlie November, Grand Canyon. So again, we can select Enter. And lastly, we're going to be tracking in towards the destination, which is the Grand Canyon National Airport. So. Kilo, Charlie, Golf, November. Correction, Kilo, Golf, Charlie, November. So we have the Grand Canyon National Airport, Arizona. Again, we can hit enter. Quick look through the waypoints there, everything looking good. So flight plan has been set correctly. Got GPS set up there on the HSI, we'll go with VOR Loke for now. And we'll just bring ourselves here onto the flight plan page. We'll come out slightly on the range towards 10 miles. In terms of the nav radios, the Flagstaff VOR on a frequency of 113.85. So we can tune that up. It's 113.85. And later on for the Grand Canyon National VOR, we need 111.65. So we can tune that up ahead of time. And we have 111.65. So radios are set for the flight, heading bug will set once we're out of the runway, we're going to be departing off runway 21. In terms of our taxi checks, the taxi clearance has been obtained. Altimeter is checked, we've checked the HSI. Aircraft is all clear on the right, all clear on the left there as well. Taxi light is selected on, part brake can come off. And the aircraft not wanting to roll there, down to the 1000 RPM, so coming up on the throttle. I do find the 182RG needs quite a bit of power initially to get moving. So there we're up at around 1500 RPM. Once you've got it rolling though, you can start to come back on the throttle. Nice short taxi for us, we're just going to make our way straight ahead, out to the holding point for runway 21. Slight intersection departure here, but we've got plenty of runway, not much wind around. Slight tailwind here for the run-up, but again, the wind sock's looking pretty dead. The nose does dip rather a lot there under braking, as you can see. I don't know whether or not that's true to life. Anyway, we'll take the park brake on, again letting the engine idle here at around 1000 RPM. In terms of the run-up, aircraft again not aligned into wind here, but with the current wind conditions. Not too pertinent. Park brake is set again. Seat bolts and shoulder harnesses are secure. Cabin doors are closed and latched. Flight controls are once again full and free. Flight instruments are checked and set. Fuel selector valve is set through to both. Auxiliary fuel pump is on. 
According to the checklist here, we should see a slight rise in fuel pressure with the pump operating. That doesn't seem to be the case. Take that off once again. With the run-up itself coming through to 1700 RPM. 4794, I apologize. Thanks for runway at Bravo 8. Full short of runway 33 at Bravo 9 or uh, due to poor visibility. So 1700, we'll cycle the prop. Fairly limited and fairly slow reduction there in prop RPM, which seems a little bit unusual. Nevertheless, there is some reduction. Then you can make about a 200 RPM drop. So I think, again, a slight accuracy there. Least versus most aircraft I've flown with a variable pitch prop. Not flown the 182RG. Anyway, we'll cycle the mags. So initially coming on to the left mag. That's giving us about a 75 RPM drop, which is within limits. Looking for a max of 175 and a max difference of 50 RPM between the two mags. Back up to 1700. Onto the right mag. Same drop there, about 75 RPM. And back through to both. Same mags are checked. Engine instruments are checked. Same there for the ammeter. Everything looking good. Suction is checked within the green. Carp heat. Selected on. And again, we're seeing a drop there of around 75 RPM. Carp heat set back to cold. We'll come all the way back to idle now on the throttle. And we look to be idling there around 700 RPM, back up to 1000. So once again the car peep is set cold, throttle friction has been adjusted. The before takeoff checks, radios and avionics are set just for the autopilot here as well. We'll set ourselves, initially we'll go up to uh, 9000 feet. There's some pretty significant high terrain en route, but we've got nice VFR flying conditions today. So we'll start with 9000, we'll work our way through the terrain as we go. The so radios and avionics are set. We said we'd set the heading bug here as well, parting off runway 21. We'll do that as we make our way out onto the runway just to save a little bit of time here. Strobe lights not fitted to the aircraft. We'll take the landing lights on. Taxi light can come off. Windows, making sure those are both closed and locked. Trim is set for takeoff. Heading indicator once again showing 125, 125 nearer to 130 there on the compass within limits transponder can go through to out squawking 1200 peter heat will take on and clearance has been obtained we can now get ourselves lined up here on runway 21 number one two juliet left turn off for uh, join off contact ground one off left turn off of one two juliet contact ground Yes, 4794, runway 33, line up and wait off, direction C now, 8 mile final. 419, I forgot to mention there is an RJ holding a position. However, they're exiting the runway now, uh, yeah. wind 1603, runway 15 good wind. And this is 419, verify, excuse me, miss approach. Right, thank you. Okay, so we're now lined up here on runway 21. That checks with the compass. HSI heading looks good there as well. Part brake can come off. And feeding in the throttle. We're going to be departing here out towards the southwest, so we'll enter into a left hand pattern here to depart out towards the north towards Flagstaff. Again, pretty nice engine sounds there overall as we come up on the power. The aircraft wanting to pull out to the right, so feeding in some left rudder. It's full throttle, power is checked, RPM's looking good, temperatures and pressures are checked. And just coming out through 60 knots, easing back on the yoke. Overall the aircraft paving quite nicely there during the takeoff. Easy to control, didn't feel overly responsive or overly sensitive. So we do have a positive climb. 
Clear of the runway, we'll tap the brakes and bring the gear up. Full throttle for now, we're pretty high altitude, so we're not producing much in terms of the manifold pressure there. An RPM 2500, that looks pretty good for the time being. Once again, just confirming we do have the flaps selected up. And making our left turn initially out towards the east. And overall, as with most Carinado aircraft, we'll test the flight model out a little bit more later on, but certainly in terms of just general flying, I actually find the 182 to be pretty pleasant in terms of its handling. Nice and easy on the controls. 5707, contact Denver 135.12, yeah. 3512, Sky 5707, see ya. 5000 Bravo, uh, clear direct Kelly, maintain 13000 until you're established, you're good approach. Now just coming on to crosswinds. Continue the turn around onto downwinds. And as we said, initially climbing up to 9000 feet. We'll leave the mixture as it is for now, we can lean out once again, once we're established in the cruise. We're well up as well through the traffic pattern at this point, so we'll just continue the turn straight round onto a reasonable intercept heading towards the Flagstaff VOR, maintaining 80 knots for now here in the climb. And again, overall the aircraft, very nice, stable, easy to fly. We'll come to heading for around 340 for now. So again, we'll just leave the heading bug round. I have just Bravo Roger. Uh, as we're speaking now, looks like there's one just off the airport. Don't have a flight plan on it, he's just VFR off the field. You can talk to them on advisories, Fox VFR, and you have a good Beautiful day. scenery here as well as we come out of Sedona. S340, definitely one of the more interesting airports to operate in and out of, particularly for GA aircraft. And as you can see there on the GNS 530, that's taking us straight overhead the field, so we should see the CDI bar come in almost immediately. Just coming up through 8,000 feet, so another 1,000 feet here in the climb. And as we discussed, we've got some pretty significant high terrain on route. You can see much of that there off the nose. But again, we've got lovely, beautiful VFR conditions. It'll stay down to around 9,000 feet. We don't have any oxygen on board today at any rate. And we'll just pick our way around the terrain as we go. We'll come out on the range again as well now on the GNS 530. So there's Flagstaff. Up through 8,500. Temperatures and pressures looking good. Uh, Fox, uh, well, I got you. Get to go to the general mass frequency 134.935. Just feeding in a little bit more elevator trim there. We've now got the aircraft nicely trimmed out. And just approaching our level off altitude. And we'll come back now to intercept our course of 008 towards Flagstaff. Leveling the aircraft off here as well. Plus 20, our correction 3416. You're clear direct rev me, cross rev me above 1010,000, clear to ILS, runway 108. As usual, the aircraft pretty sensitive in pitch. 
Easy enough to fly, but certainly if you put in any significant control inputs there, you end up jamming the nose down a little bit more than you might like. So set there on the heading bug, just letting that speed build, so keeping the power for now. And looking good there now in terms of speed, we'll actually leave full power here, we've still got 22 inches there on the manifold pressure, which is a nice cruise power setting. We'll come back there on the RPM. 25 echo contact, Salt Lake Center, 124.35. So power is set, and again a nice change in engine note there as we come back on the prop. November 52 Papa Echo, contact Salt Lake Center, 124.35. The aircraft just feeling ever so slightly left wing heavy. We do have rudder trim, so we can counter that should we wish. So just putting in a few clicks there on the rudder trim. Get ourselves back down to 9,000 feet, and then we'll test out the autopilots. Nicely established now on the CDI bar. So tracking inbound towards Flagstaff. Showing about 15 miles to run there currently. And we're getting a little bit of lift and sink here off the hills, which is why that vertical speed indicator keeps jumping up and down a little bit. Okay, so nicely established on the heading, trimmed out here at 9,000 feet. Take the autopilot on, we'll come into heading. And out. There's 9,000. At the moment there, the aircraft seems to be doing a nice job, maintaining the altitude. And it does seem as though work's been done over the years to improve the default autopilot, which is, I'm pretty sure, what we're using here. So that all seems to be behaving quite nicely. Just come back onto the CDI bar, we'll test out NAV. In terms of leaning the engine, again, we've got 22 inches on the manifold pressure, 2300 RPM. Just keep coming back on that mixture lever. So for the officer, you're welcome to stay here and monitor. I can give you the traffic call for about the next uh, eight minutes until I start to lose you, and then just make the switch once I can't hear anymore. So that looks to be about PKGT. We'll go rich again of that. Want to verify blocks there a little bit, so that was for six with Yankee. And the mixture's set. But now though, nicely established during the cruise, doing about 140 knots indicated. So I'll be tracking overhead the Flagstaff VOR and out towards the northwest, about 50 miles here to run to Grand Canyon National currently. As we make our way on route, we'll head outside the aircraft. So we'll come back a little bit ahead of the arrival here today so that we have more time to discuss the 182RG. Despite the beautiful weather here, I'm thinking we'll probably fly the ILS just to test out the functionality there as well on the aircraft. Uh, Charlie Papa, Denver Center, Roger. I've had that somewhere from Lights Out reported. The Steamboat Springs out, Cemetery 3031. Charlie Foxtrot, as you turn final, that traffic's going to be just off your uh, right side, maybe 2 o'clock and uh, 2 miles. They're still about a mile north of final, showing 9,700. Foxtrot, change to advisory. You can just cancel with me on this frequency. I can hear you all the way to the ground. And uh, two Charlie Fox, uh, can't place received that VFR traffic's off to the right wing now in a mile. No factor, squad VFR, you have a nice day. That was 34, 6 can't block you there, stay again. No, that was not for you, but you can also go ahead and switch over to advisors now. Just cancel with me this frequency. I can hear you on the ground, stop at 34, 6 can't block. 4-5, Denver Center, roger. Uh, just going to maintain flight level 2 zero, zero, and let me know or what approach you're planning, I guess. Sorry for that wrong, it's 7 feature VOR, Echo Kilo Romeo VOR, depart that on a 360 heading and we'll set you up over at me. Extra Alpha Tango Fox, Fat Romeo, you are clear, direct truth or consequence. Tango Charlie Sierra. Charlie Roger, just trust the Thompson intersection at flight level 230. Okay, so we managed to pick our way between the mountains on routes and we are now just approaching the Grand Canyon. You can see that there off to our 2 o'clock. Same for the airfield, that's just off the right wing, although probably quite a bit harder to make out currently. Just going off the GNS 530, you can see we are coming in for a bit of a right-hand base currently. And as we discussed, plan to come onto the RLS for runway 03. We've already got that tuned up, 108.9, inbound course is 030. Just before we fly the RLS though, we're going to carry out a very small amount of aerial work here, so we'll get ourselves up towards 10,000 feet. 
Um, whilst we're waiting for the aircraft here in the climb, we'll briefly run through the tablets. This will be very familiar to any of you that own any previous Carinado aircraft. The functionality there is very much the same. On the first page we have the ability to select static elements, which you'll have seen during the introduction. There, for example, we have the rain cover, which is a new addition for Carinado aircraft, and that's nice to see. We also have chocks and pito covers, for example. External power again you saw during the introduction. That, I believe, is only cosmetic. Same for the tow bar. We have the option to both show and display both the pilot and the co-pilots using the default Microsoft Flight Simulator avatars. And lastly, we have the ability to open and close all of the aircraft doors. We can also do that manually just using the click spot. The function that we have now on most Carinado aircraft and is really great, we have the ability to choose both the TDS Garmin GTNXI as well as the PMS GTN 750. Again, there's a slight bug here currently, as best I could tell. If we actually select the GTNXI, there's no option to deselect it thereafter, and so you'll be stuck with the unit for the rest of the flight. I did try fiddling around, the only way I could get the unit to reset was actually to restart the flight itself. We have a couple of startup options if you want to get the aircraft up and airborne nice and quickly. So we have cold and dark state, ready for taxi and ready for takeoff. And lastly we have a couple of brief checklists here for both the takeoff and the landing. The checklists are somewhat necessary as unfortunately, as best I can tell, the product doesn't come with any documentation. And that is rather disappointing to see. That's the first standalone Carinado product that I've come across without any documentation. Maybe the Waco is the same as well, but anyway, certainly so far most of the aircraft have had appropriate checklists and manuals. So again, rather disappointing there. Anyway, just approaching 10,000, we'll take the autopilot out, come back on the power, we're just going to carry out a stall. Take the car peats. There's the gear warning horn, we'll just come back up on the throttle, keep ourselves above the gear warning horn, save us having to listen to that throughout the manoeuvre. So just letting that speed bleed off up at around 10,000 feet, back through 80 knots. We're currently on the glide, but we'll obviously lose some altitude here in the manoeuvre. And just coming onto the loke here as well. Just turn inbound towards the field, keep ourselves roughly on the localizer. Down through 70 knots. Still plenty of ailer on authority at these sorts of speeds. Number 237 X-ray, SSL, runway 33, line up and wait. This is still warning horn. Just induced there as I came back on the yoke. Okay, so still warning horn around 60 knots. We're just going to keep ourselves here at 10,000 feet, continuing to come back on the yoke. Speed down at around 50 knots now. There's full back stick. And the aircraft naturally wants to drop the right wing. That seems to be pretty consistent at these sorts of power settings at least. Anyway, we'll recover, so copy can go off. We're back up to full power for the time being. So the stall behaviour in the aircraft is reasonably benign overall. Still not sure about that wing over from a uh, high plane Cessna. But the aircraft doesn't enter into a spin, it pretty much self recovers thereafter, so again, nothing too violent in terms of the stall behaviour. Back down at 9,000 feet, we'll come on to a heading of 050. Back towards the ILS. Yeah, 4794, contact, Roger. Shall we come on to 060, just really make sure we get on that loop before we hit the glide slope. Over to 5, Jeff, great day guys, go 4794. So we'll take the autopilot in once again, we'll come back into heading. And we'll set 9000. Minus 300 on the vertical speed to capture 9000. Come on to the loop, we'll arm up nav. And we'll come back off the power again, start reducing that speed before we come onto the glide, we'll get the gear down. So we're just going to let the autopilot fly the initial stages of the ILS again, just to see the aircraft behaviour. Make sure everything's tracking nicely, I'm sure that some of you will want to use the 182RG for a little bit of instrument flying. Glide slope just coming in as well, so we'll arm approach, we do have the glide slope armed. 
And speed to check, we'll take the gear down. Back up on the throttle, we'll maintain around 100 knots for now. As we come down, final approach. So just waiting here until we see the capture of the glide. Cobra 37 XA, you're west, final front of direction, Sirius 15 mile final. Copy. So far, having flown a couple of ILSs in the aircraft, it seems to track very nicely. Indeed, the 182 seems to work pretty solidly in terms of the autopilot. I've had no issues flying a heading, tracking both the VOR, using GPS navigation. Same for flying the ILS. So you can see there we've captured the glide with no issues whatsoever. In terms of our downward checks, the brakes are checked and off. Undercarriage is down, but you have a green light mixture. We're not going to come through to fully rich, again with the aerodrome elevation being around six and a half thousand feet. We're just riching up slightly here as we come down the ILS. In terms of the fuel pump, no mention of that for the takeoff, so I assume the same is true for the landing. We'll leave that off. And in terms of our fuel state, still plenty of fuel on board. We fully fueled up out of Sedona. Light instruments are checked. The landing light is selected on, harness is secure. And just coming down through eight and a half thousand feet. Speed looking good. Again, the aircraft tracks very nicely. You can see solid there on both the loco and the glide slope. Albeit we are in pretty benign conditions currently. Anyway, the aim of the exercise there was really just to see how the aircraft copes in terms of the capture. We'll fly the rest of the approach manually, so once again, autopilot can come out. And as we mentioned earlier, to hand fly, I very much enjoy the 182 overall. It's pleasant, it's stable. Once you've got the aircraft trimmed out, it sits very nicely as well. Just requiring very minimal inputs on my part at the moment to get us down the ILS. We'll keep the speed up for now. We've still got six miles to run. We'll start reducing speed as we get a little bit closer in towards the runway. Slightly high now on the glide. We'll keep our present position actually though. We've got the parking area is down at the other end of the field, so we might as well land a little bit long and just cheer up some of the runway before we touch down. So I'm pretty happy with our placement for the time being. And the approach here giving us a rather nice view of the Grand Canyon as we come down towards runway 03. Ground 5, 48 from Atlantic with whiskey for taxi. Yeah, so as with most Carinado aircraft, it's not the most detailed product you're ever going to see, but as I say in pretty much every Carinado review I seem to do, I think for the price it's actually a very nice offering. Graphically it's excellent, of course, pretty much second to none. Sounds are really good, so it makes for quite an immersive product, both visually and in terms of the audio. Flight model is perhaps slightly more basic, but again, it's very pleasant to fly. It doesn't have any major vices. Start reducing speed now, so we'll come back off the throttle take the car peat once again. And as you've seen, by and large, minus a couple of bugs here and there, everything seems to work pretty much correctly. Again, not study level in terms of its implementation, but certainly accurate enough that you can buy the Cessna 182 in a fairly detailed fashion. You can run through all the real world checklists. So, speed's back in the white arc, we'll take flaps 10. We'll come back to really fine here on the prop. And we'll go flaps 20. So pitch is full fine, undercarriage is down, flaps. Just the last stage of flaps there to come. And we'll let the speed now come back to around 70 knots. So flaps are set, and clearance has been received. The runway is clear. Just coming over the middle marker. And again, we'll aim to land a little bit long. come off at the second exit on the right. At least that's the plan. Slight crosswind out from the left. Get rid of the car peat.
Once more in the approach configuration, the 182, very easy to fly, nice and responsive on the controls, nothing feeling too untowards. And again, we're just feeding in a little bit more power, just having the aircraft drift down the runway towards the exit. Start reducing the power now. And definitely the aircraft is one of those aircraft, it's so easy to finesse the controls, should be pretty easy to get a absolute greaser out of the landing. As our touchdown, just drifting out slightly there to the left of the centre line. So correcting that back onto the centre line. And we'll start braking now again, vacating off to the right here, onto Echo. Okay, so just approaching the main apron, we just held off on the offline checks here so that we can run through those before the shutdown. So flaps can come up, transponder can go off, and we'll take the landing light off here as well. One thing I have just noticed about the 182, definitely quite a blue tint here on the glass within the cockpit, which does rather show in this particular scene, I think. Certainly it's not the weather there, that is the uh, glass itself. So we'll just come past the uh, Grand Canyon Airlines main building here. We'll go get ourselves parked up in front of the Grand Canyon hangar. Hello, Grand Sky 5669, we're in spot 3 is Alpha available. We'll run through the shutdown. As usual, after that, we'll cap off the video with a brief conclusion. S5669, unable. Alright. So, on to the brakes. Part brake is set, we'll leave the engine idling back up at 1000 RPM. So Everlux master switch can go off, once again that cap 140 is powered still, and same there as well actually with the fuel computer. Heat heat can come off, leave the beacon and the nav lights for now, and we'll just idle out the mixture here, till we cut the engine. So good shutdown, throttle back to idle, mags are selected off. Take the alternator and the battery master off, and that is our shutdown checklist complete. So there you go guys, I do hope you enjoyed our outing in the Caronado Cessna 182RG. I very much enjoyed the aircraft myself, it's only met my expectations. If you are familiar with Caronado and their products, and you typically enjoy that general level of fidelity, then I'm sure you'll generally be very happy with the 182RG. The aircraft is done to a very typical Caronado standard, it's certainly visually very beautiful. Pretty decent in the sound department, the flight modeling systems, whilst not incredibly deep, are nonetheless very usable. And all in all, the Cessna 182RG offers something slightly different in the sim, certainly makes for a pleasant option for cruising around. I'll keep things brief, but as usual I'll just expand upon the product slightly further. In terms of my dislikes currently with the 182, firstly, as we discussed, there's a complete lack of documentation as best I can tell. It may be that I missed something, but I dug around in all of the usual places, in all of the usual folders. Again, I didn't manage to come up with anything there, so using a real-world 182RG checklist for the flight today. As I mentioned during the flight itself, this is once again a very disappointing trend that we've now seen from a number of developers. The 182RG is very reasonably priced, but nevertheless I don't really consider that an excuse not to have documentation included with the product. We spoke at some length as well about the issue with the Cat 140. Obviously not a major problem, doesn't really affect the use of the aircraft, but it would be nice to see fixed up. The same as well with the selection of the Garmin GTN XI if you do own the TDS mod. It's not a major issue, but it will require a restart of the flight if you want to switch back to the GNS 530, at least as best I could tell. 
That's obviously pretty inconvenient, far from ideal. The rudder deflection on the model, we discussed that during the startup. That seems to be inaccurate to me currently. I highly doubt the Cessna 182RG has such a small throw on the rudder. And as is often the case within Microsoft Flight Simulator, those are the sorts of bugs that you rather wonder how they slip through testing. Whilst not technically a bug, the blue tint on the glass I do feel is a little bit overdone. That was particularly noticeable on the ground in Grand Canyon National. And I think as well that the nose gear oleo compression seemed to be a little bit overdone. The nose really dips under braking. That might be true to life of the real world aircraft, I'm not entirely sure. I would also question the prop behaviour on the ground during the run up. I would have expected to see a greater drop there in RPM. And finally as well, whilst the engine sounds are very nice, there is some noticeable looping there, particularly with the buzzsaw sound coming off the prop. Otherwise though, to be completely honest, there's not a whole lot more I can pick apart with the aircraft. Bearing in mind the price points, and the fact that, as I always mention, Carinado is not striving for a study level aircraft, I think, generally speaking, the Cessna 182RG is a very solid effort. It probably doesn't need to be stated again, but as is pretty typical for a Carinado product, the 182 is pretty much second to none in terms of its visuals within the sim. Sound-wise, I thought the aircraft was very good overall. I like the engine sounds both internally and externally. I like the fact as well that all of the cockpit controls and switches have appropriate sounds. Systems depth, whilst not spectacular, was certainly adequate. And again, you can run a real-world checklist. All of the switches that were needed there were clickable and seemed to have a function. And the same is broadly true with the flight model. The aircraft didn't seem to behave particularly egregiously throughout any stage of the flight. Performance, whilst I'm sure it's not quite on the numbers, seemed to be within the ballpark. And once again, the Cessna 182RG, very pleasant to fly, very easy on the controls, and a pretty great option as well for cruising around at a nice high speed. There is a decent amount available as well in terms of the optional extras. For example, we saw we have the external fixtures and fittings, the ability to switch between the various Garmin units. We also get a decent selection of repaints as well as two separate cockpit colour schemes, which is really nice. We have the beige scheme, which of course we featured here in the video today, as well as an all black cockpit for those who prefer that particular aesthetic. And lastly, in terms of the FPS, the 182RG is actually a surprisingly heavy hitter for a Carinado aircraft. I was getting around 77 FPS in the 182 versus around 97 FPS in the default Cessna 152. So a 20 FPS loss, a pretty solid loss there. Not completely unmanageable necessarily, but again quite surprising for a Carinado aircraft. Anyway, I think that's a pretty good place to wrap things up. Once again, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, then please do consider subscribing as well. And if you would like to help support the channel, you can do so either by becoming a channel member or patron. On that note, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. As always, very much appreciated. I do hope all of you are having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care, and I will see you all again soon.